I'm Steve Craddy with Plant City Bonsai. Welcome to our What's Looking Good Right Now video. We have just a, a large number of gorgeous trees. We've all complained about the no rain, but it's been a fantastic growing year, especially for conifers, pines and junipers. They've never looked better. A few years ago, I, I decided not to carry tropical bonsai and uh, thought I was making a good decision. But for one thing, I miss not having them, and my uh, customers dictate to me what they need and what they want. And uh, so our, we've grown from very few to a very nice selection of the uh, subtropical and tropical bonsai. Especially uh, with my growers now, we're coming up with trees that have some interesting aerial roots, which you'll see uh, in several uh, pictures that we're going to be doing. Uh, this is a Golden Gate ficus. Uh, it needs at least medium light up to high light. Uh, it's just a real easy one to do, work with, and it's just a gorgeous piece. This next tree is a recent acquisition. It's an arboricola, and it's done with the um, banyan style root display. And what I love about these trees, I love everything about them actually. This one in particular because it's so dramatic. Uh, but they like to live in small pots. They love a shallow uh, pot to live in and uh, uh, they will accept lower light so they fit anybody's home environment. And I just think this is one of the more awesome ones that I've had in the last couple of years. In most cases, space is, a, uh, is limited for indoor bonsai, so we do carry quite a number of their arboricolas that are smaller to very, very small, but like the one I'm looking at here, number 17, uh, it gives you a great aerial root display. It's a very nice sized tree. It has a presence, and uh, I just love it. This is a tree I get more excited about every year. It's a Jabota Kava. It's a subtropical. Uh, it actually has a has a, 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 a wider variety of acceptances. It will it doesn't have to be in a really warm warm uh, environment totally. Uh, the light has to be good on it, but uh, it's a very dependable tree. Uh, they they like they they uh, like a lot of water, which is good because we like to water our trees. It is, it is so popular because the bark, as this, is a, this tree is about uh, 12 years old, and as you can see, or maybe not be able to see, it's marbled. It's, it's sort of like uh, it's an exfoliating crepe myrtle tree, and uh, which for indoor bonsai, it doesn't look like your typical indoor. It actually looks like a tree tree outdoors. This is one of my favorite acquisitions of the summer. Uh, it's a forest of trident maples, and the, the planting has a quite an interesting history. For one thing, when's the last time you saw a 40-inch uh, beautiful Japanese high-quality pot? They're like unheard of. And I remember selling this and missing it as soon as I let it go. And I, I have it back now for a while, and it's just it's the ultimate, it's the ultimate bonsai pot. Uh, but another thing that really makes this a cool planting is the history of the trees. This tree here, which is the largest of the group main, being main tree, uh, it's, it's not very well ramified, but it's special to me because my, my father grew it in Tennessee, or I should say I grew it in Tennessee at his, uh, in his yard and would only go up there three times a year. So trinit maples, when they're growing hard in the ground, have to be regularly shaped. And this tree, I really let it just kind of go too far. But still, it's my dad's tree, I love it. And it's big, and it's, it's, it, it has its own personality. The tree right behind it, which you can't see real well from that angle, is another trinit maple that was imported from China uh, uh, in, you know, many, many years ago, and it's been kept in a very small pot. 
Uh, these trees have a have a distinguishing characteristic. Uh, they're they're not a real fast growing in a container trident. The leaves are much smaller, so it's just a very very special tree. It was good to see uh, th how these have been put together, and uh, uh, this uh, he actually in installed these azaleas to maybe represent rhododendron and uh, it's this azalea that it, it doesn't bloom uh, but the leaf size is so perfect it works perfectly for being our our uh, under understory plantings for a forest a very unusual candidate for bonsai this is a rose of sharon and uh, uh, the trees are are quite old i uh, originally acquired this three tree group as it is in a very shallow mica pot and uh, it lived very happily with the previous owner for over 20 years and uh, I ended up uh, uh, purchasing the collection and uh, since then have actually sold it uh, in the last several years the, uh, the, uh, the new owner finally sold it back to me. Very unusual species you never you rarely see these uh, used this way in, as a bonsai. Uh, this one actually bloomed profusely in the spring and it's actually sending out sporadic blooms now. Here, this one's getting ready to show off another bloom and it's a beautiful white and red blossom. As we're walking by in this direction I just had to stop for a second and just mention uh, again the uh, the remarkable Itogawa grafted on probably a Camiciparis uh, trunk. Each branch has been grafted on and this was done by Masishi many many years ago. Uh, it was in when we talked about it back in the spring it was in the uh, growing bucket that it was in and uh, it's so happy now to be in a bonsai pot with some really nice fast drainage soil so it's loving it. It's just a gorgeous tree. Number 21 is a three grouping of trident maples and uh, it's another acquisition for this this season and the trees are actually uh, from China. Uh, the company did it one time and they're just incredibly dramatic little trees. Uh, they've been kept in small containers. They would be you know much larger had they had they been placed in uh, larger growing uh, pots but uh, I think it's great for the application for this tree, three, group, three tree grouping. I've had more fun this year planting on lace rock. Uh, the selection of lace rock available to me has been fantastic and uh, uh, this is like the perfect marriage of tree and pot. Uh, the, the pot actually does have a slight cavity which is it, it makes me feel better when they have that and uh, but the, the the tree was actually grown like over a frisbee so the, it had like a perfectly perfectly flat root system and uh, it just it just sort of fell into place and uh, it's just really a blast working with these this is a Satsuki azalea it's done in one of my favorite styles uh, I really have no idea how the Japanese accomplished this but it's a very very cool style and uh, this particular one just it you turn it it looks beautiful from every angle it almost looks like when you see these fabulous hand carved root stands uh, I just love love this style here's the brother to the previous Satsuki we just talked about I love the structure of this tree. I'm just chomping at the bit to cut back on the foliage because it's, it's just it's very very dramatic. But I'm I'm using great restraint because we just shouldn't mess with them when they first enter into this country. You should just let them be, let them uh, rest, let them grow, and then uh, worry about the design more next season. Love this tree. This trident maple, root over rock style came from George Miranaka's nursery in California. It has a very pretty rock. Uh, it's not exactly potted correctly and that is my fault because 
when we got our trees back from California, the only concern that I have is to get them into something and get them well hydrated and get them uh, uh, acclimated to Georgia. So this tree will be, you know, where we show the stone off as much as possible. And this is a good angle here because it has this nice root coming down very nicely, kind of with an angle to it. It's not just straight going into the soil. So very nice, nice one choice. And, and uh, uh, I'm sure there's another possibility for a front. Since Big Sur and surrounding areas in California are one of our, fa are our favorite places to spend fun time, I have to have around me a few of the coastal redwoods, the ones that are, you know, evergreen redwoods. Uh, these are very, very prized. This small tree here, if you look at it, has, has lots of years on it, very gnarly. And this tree in particular, when I first got it, it, it kept burning on the foliage. And uh, actually, I've worked on this about four years now, and uh, it's taken till right now to get everything stabilized. And the tree's actually uh, very impressive. This is another great example of uh, what you can do with a uh, larger lace rock. I tell you, these classes have been, I think, one of the most, uh, the best received classes uh, of the year. And we did three of them this summer and a couple of private ones, 101, uh, past that. Uh, this particular stone is very interesting because the, it has as many crags as it has cavities to plant in. And the cavities are actually extra nice to sustain a long-lived tree. The trees starting at the top are Itoagawa Shimpaku, and they've all been very tastefully wired and uh, very believable that you're at the, at the top of a sizable mountain. Here we have dwarf equisetum or dwarf horsetail, and the rhododendron uh, illusion is created by more of the non-blooming azaleas. Thank you for taking the time to view my video of what's looking good. I saved actually one of my, my favorites to last. And uh, this is an imported white pine and uh, uh, it's a recent acquisition. Don't know the entire history so it's been kind of like this, uh, solving a mystery. The bark is actually uh, is very rough from Nabari to Apex. The movement is awesome. Uh, there's no sign of a graft. So therefore, we have to think that we, this is a beautiful black pine that probably over, uh, over time, someone has very tastefully grafted white pine branching to the tree. Uh, I'd like to get more input on that, but uh, it's a fabulous tree, uh, not having the grass scar and all this rough bark and beautifully, perfectly placed branches. Thanks again for viewing the video. Look forward to talking to you very soon.